Hi guys and welcome to the Gateshead vs Sunderland match review. My god it feels so good to say a match review again. It's been literally like five months so if you're happy and excited to see a match review back on the channel and of course we'll be coming back to the channel, hit the like button for me. It's always massively, massively appreciated. So of course we took on Gateshead away from home. Now uh, before we get into it of course it is on the pre-season. The result for me wasn't um, wasn't the priority necessarily. It's a bonus if we win the game, but particularly this game being the first one of pre-season, I see this more uh, more as a fitness drill. Uh, see how sharp the lads are, and I'll just of course see where they're at in terms of progression. Which is, uh, of course, it's nice to see. And it was brilliant to watch the lads again because it had been so goddamn long. Do you know what I mean? It, it was really nice to watch them again with a couple of beers and do my unusual thing. So uh, anyway, getting into the game, we did start with Burge in goal. We also carried on with the wing back system that Phil Parkinson, that Phil Parkinson sorry, does like. Uh, we had Flanagan, uh, Bailey Wright and Conor McLaughlin playing a little bit out of position there, playing uh, along the back three as well. We had O'Neill as right wing back, Denver Hume of course as a uh, left wing back. We had Ledbitter and Dobson in the middle. Now across the sort of front three and uh, mi mixing and matching a little bit, we had uh, Embleton, Maguire and White, although of course White is uh, primarily the, the striker. Well, we say that, but uh, <laughs> we'll get onto that later on. So starting and getting into the game, uh, we, um, I feel like we controlled position quite well. Um, we pretty much, you know, had control of the game uh, from start to finish. Really, uh, I would say. But in, in the first half, there was a big focus on keeping hold of the ball. Uh, Gates said we were making it difficult. They were sitting back and playing counter-attacking football quite a, quite a bit, which I understand. And they actually held their line, their back line, quite well. It made it difficult for us to sort of, you know, try try and get through. Uh, their, their defence and try and get in behind them maybe a little bit and they were, they were defending quite well but in saying that um, you could see for us and I could see it from my loft there was, seemed to be a huge emphasis on uh, on wing play for, and our sort of our system seemed to just be consistently get the ball to Dobson and he'll hoof it out wide and that was sort of the running theme I picked up on uh, for the majority of that first half and sometimes it did come off to be fair uh, a good few good balls here and there from Dobson uh, out wide to either Luke O'9 or to Denver Hume, but profoundly Denver Hume. Um, there was a few nice little passages of play where we'd maybe play one two with Embleton, or we'd actually take on the man himself. And Denver Hume was probably the biggest threat for us um, in that first half. But again, with uh, Denver Hume, which was quite frustrating, and it's a frustration we've had for the last sort of season or so. He'd get himself into brilliant positions, brilliant positions, but his his final ball is. I hate to say it because I love the lad, but it's so, so poor. It really was so poor. Again, it's only pre-season. Hopefully, you know, with a few more minutes and a bit more game time, that will that will only come in time. But, uh, but yeah, there was plenty of times where we'd take on one man, maybe two men, and it gets the byline and he'd just smash it straight out of play. It would go way past anyone in the box. Um, so there was a lot of wasted opportunities in that sense. But the first real opportunity came from Elliot Embleton, a player who you guys should know by now I hate. Oh, hate? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I rate. I definitely don't hate him. I, <laughs> I rate him so, so highly. Um, he got the ball on sort of the edge of the box. It, it was a big sort of scramble in the area, but he, his close control was fantastic. He went on a little amazing run, taking on two, three, maybe even four uh, gates of players. And he did have a, a bit of an angle. He had to dig it out himself, and the keepers held it quite easily. Um, it's probably right to say as well, by the way, Gates said they did have, I think it was five or six trialists starting this game. So um, yeah, I think it'd probably be fair to mention that before we do continue. But eventually we did, um, we broke the deadlock. We got a free kick on the edge of the box. I think it was Denver Hume who does one of his uh, runs, really direct runs that are so hard to deal with for, for any player. In League One, they struggle to deal with it as well. He does this really direct run where he cuts inside and just keeps going and keeps going, but he got taken down. So we got a free kick right on the edge of the box. And uh, Embleton and uh, Maguire both stood over it, but you know he's going to take it, of course. The King, Chris Maguire, and he's absolutely smashed it into the top corner. It was a lovely free kick. Great to see that he's still got that in his locker after five months. Uh, so yeah, we're a goal up, and it looks like we're going to cruise at this point. We were, it's not as if we were making chance after chance after chance, but it, we were holding possession. They weren't really threatening us until a few moments later. Um, it was a sort of a 50-50 challenge in the middle, and Dobson, who was just far too soft way too soft in the challenge and it was nicked off him, a bit, bit of a mistake on his part and it made it easy for them to slip their uh, their striker through, one on one with the keeper, one on one with Burge and he's, and he's put it past him uh, to make it 1-1. But in saying that, I think it was just a few moments before that, Burge actually made an absolutely top class save, a top class save and uh, it was their only real chances really, to be fair, Gates in that first half was the goal itself and they did actually manage to get it on the counter with one of their strikers, poor with names anyways, you know, but he cut in from the left hand side and he's, uh, he's done really well to shift it onto his right foot. And he's tried to just curl it and bend it into that top right-hand corner. And somehow, Burge, who did excellently to get across to it and tip it around the post, 
So hats off to him, it was a great save. But other than that, in the first half, Burge was kept relatively quiet, didn't really have too much to do. Um, but yeah, so the first half continued. Unfortunately, Embleton did go off with an injury. I have looked after the game, and uh, luckily it doesn't look like it was anything too serious. He just felt a bit of tightness on his calf, I do believe, or his hamstring, just a little bit of tightness. So uh, it was just a bit of a precaution to bring him off. And uh, Neil came on, it was good to see him, and I think he did perfectly fine coming on the youngster. I think he, was, he looked pretty decent to me. Um, but yeah, so the, the first half pitted out. Uh, with not a massive amount going on. We had a couple of shots here and there, but um, it, I really wasn't impressed. Uh, to summarise, summarise that first half, again, I think there was a huge focus and emphasis on wing play. It was just get the ball and hoof it towards the wings at every opportunity, which I really, I didn't necessarily like to see, but I could understand why it was going on, because I don't know whether Philip Parkinson just said to do that, or that was just the kind of tactic for that first half. But Ledbitter, you could see, was, you know, bless him. I think he, he should probably go for a sort of coaching role. It's been said by a couple of other YouTubers and other people across social media as well. You know, I'd love to have him in and around the ground or in and around the club in some kind of uh, capacity. But for me, he just looked way off it. He was so, so slow. And every time he got the ball, um, you know, maybe not every time, that's probably a bit harsh, but most times he got the ball, even when he was under no pressure at all and there's no gates of player pressing him, he'd hold it up and he'd just hoof it. And it's not a lot of the time to go out of play or he'd just drill it straight at a Gateshead player and there was just no need. And for someone who's got so much experience under his belt, he looked he looked very inexperienced to me. He looked like a trialist almost. He, he did look very, very poor. I'm not saying all trialists are bad, of course, but he, he just didn't look like the experienced player that he should be playing like. And uh, yeah, he looked very, very poor to me. And with Dobson, although it, you know he's shown in bits and pieces what he could do, uh, again, he, he did look very, very soft in the challenge and he was always very sideways passing or or sort of lumping it towards the wings, like I say. So there was no real creativity and that's what I got and that's what I was going to, trying to lead on to there. The first half, to me, it just shown that we need and we're in desperate need of creativity from the centre of midfield. But it certainly doesn't help when you have Charlie Wyke up top who was pretty much static and I'm pretty sure he had three touches throughout that entire first half or even throughout the entire time he was on. Um, I think he was very, very poor, in my opinion. I know a lot of people say you know, he might not get the delivery and stuff, but he really didn't help himself with his movement. And, of course, that coincides with not having the creativity in the centre of midfield, which, again, it it was there for everyone to see. There was such a severe lack of creativity. And, again, sideways passing and hoofs from the middle. And, uh, again, the, there was very little movement down the centre. So that forced us to play that wing game, I would think. Uh, but, anyway, coming into the second half, again, it was sort of more of the same until a, a whole array of substitutes come on. Uh, with, with the likes of Will Grigg, um, Jamali, I believe that's how you pronounce it. It was a trialist, the Kosovan uh, <laughs> the defender. I have actually asked people on Twitter this morning how to pronounce that name, uh, and that's what I've come up with. Uh, of course, the majority of Twitter took the piss out of me, but, <laughs> but, but, I, but I expect that. So Jamali, I'm going to stick with Jamali, uh, the centre-back. He, he came on, and I think he did really, really well. Um, we saw Rob Bryan for the first time, um, Jack Diamond come on, uh, Max Power and the like, uh, Gooch as well. So a, a load of players came on. And to be fair, it completely changed the game. It changed the dynamic completely. Um, and Grig, for me, was absolutely phenomenal when he came on. He just didn't look like the Grig we've, uh, we've seen. He looked so sharp. He looked like he's lost quite a bit of timber as well. We're so used to seeing Grig just kind of slowly walking across that back line and opposition back line and not really making the movement. Uh, and he was. And there was a few really good runs in, in behind. Not Not even just... And or only by Will Grigg. There was, um, I think O'Brien did a couple of times. Jack Diamond for me, who I think looked really, really good as well down the right hand side. And eventually it did get to uh, Jack Diamond on the right, pulls it in. It was a really, really nice ball, just lifting it perfectly for anyone to go on. And I think last season that would have been a header that had just been headed away and not really challenged by Will Grigg. But Will Grigg, he rose like a salmon, which I thought, Jesus Christ, where the hell's this coming from? And he just looped a header perfectly into that bottom left hand corner past the keeper who had no chance. And, and that was great to see from Will Grigg, that real determination and, and fight to want to, to, to go and contest for a ball because that's something we just hadn't seen from him. And anyway, the third goal come, uh, a ball again, it was drilled at sort of like mid, mid range towards Will Grigg at his back to goal, but he brought it down brilliantly with his chest. He pulls it back to Scowen again, another substitute would come on, and Scowen has absolutely rifled it into the bottom left hand corner to make it 3 1, and it, it was brilliant. It really was absolutely fantastic. Um, we also saw Jamali hit the um, hit, hit the post with a really, really nice header as well. Willis headed one wide, again, another, another substitute. There was too many for me to just name all the subs that come on because there was a whole array of them, like I say. 
Um, but yeah, so it changed the dynamic massively. As soon as we got some more forward thinkers on the pitch and some more direct runners, the likes of Jack Diamond and O'Brien as well, who I don't think O'Brien looked fantastic in my opinion, but, but his movement off the ball was definitely something we definitely needed. But um, one thing I will mention as well with White, before he did go off, he had such, oh my God, he had the best and probably easiest chance of the game. Um, the ball was headed away by Gateshead and then we've headed back over the back of the defence, over their back line and there's White. I think he may think or may have thought that he was offside but he just brought it down and I thought it was a joke. I, honestly, it looked like a joke. He just tapped it to the keeper. It's, just, it's as if he's passed it to him. When he had no one around him, he's probably about six, seven yard out and he just tapped it to the keeper and then obviously he's realised that he's onside and it looks like an absolute tit which... Um, you know, he really didn't help himself at all in that 90 minutes. But the game did finish, and uh, finished 3-1. I thought it was a really good run out, to be fair. Like I say, first half, we were lacking a lot. We didn't look too good, dominated possession, but it, 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 did, it was very sort of clear that we needed that bit of bite and that bit of pace and creativity along the final third, and we still need it in the middle, in my opinion. Um, but it was good to see the lads um, have that run out. You know, like I said, the... The, uh, the the goal uh, the, sorry the score line wasn't a massive thing for me it was just it, it was just a, a fitness drill a bit of a training drill um, one thing as well, um, well originally when I saw a try list on the bench I thought that was going to be Dimitri Mitchell but it turns out that Dimitri Mitchell Dimitri Mitchell I can't talk today I do apologise it's very early when I'm recording this uh, Mitchell who was the left back who was a try list uh, with us for the last few weeks apparently he's now actually on trial with Blackpool and he was playing for Blackpool in a pre-season friendly yesterday as well which is probably a bit of a shame because I kind of wanted Dimitri Mitchell as well because I thought Garbo I think he, his deal's just gone now unless we are going to give Jamali a contract which to me he looked relatively classy um, but, and I know that he can play on the left hand side of a defence as well but for, I think I think he's naturally it's more of a centre back uh, Jamali but I could be wrong um, but I would have liked to see a bit of pace to compete with uh, Denver Hume, but we shall see anyway. Um, but yeah, so that's it. I, I was relatively relatively happy with what I saw. It was only pre-season. Um, a lot of the players were very sharp. Um, my man of the match would have been uh, Will Grigg, hands down. Um, I don't know what he had before he came on the pitch, but that definitely wasn't the Will Grigg <laughs> I saw last season or the one before. I mean, don't get me wrong, like I say, it's it's a cameo appearance in pre-season, but it's nice to see players like Will Grigg, who have come under quite a lot of criticism. It's nice to see them getting the score sheet and getting assist as well. If he hadn't have done that, my man of the match probably would have gone to Jack Diamond, because, again, he looks like a really exciting player, a really exciting uh, um, prospect. And like I said, just a lot of direct running. He gave them something different to think about, and I really, really like that. But that's it, guys. What did you think of the game? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jammed.